So now we're finally ready to state the theorem, the Michel node theorem that we're interested in proving. So the Michel node theorem says the following. Um, it says that the following three statements are equivalent, right? Of course, I'm I'm fixing an alphabet, or I'm supposing I have an alphabet which is not empty, um, and then some language which is a subset of sigma star. I'm just not rewriting that, and so it says that uh, one the language L is accepted by a DFA, right? So there exists a DFA M such that it recognizes or accepts L. And then, so one, if and only if, two, where two is L is the union of some of the equivalence classes of some right invariant equivalence relation R of finite index. And then if and only if three, where three is that the equivalence relation equivalence L has finite index. Okay, so let me just copy this because I'll probably rewrite it. Um, what is this actually saying, right? So well, let's see. Um, so it's saying, you know, we have some non-empty alphabets and then some language, which is a subset of sigma star. So statement one says that I have some DFA M such that the language recognized by M is L, right? And so that's one. And then my Helner road says one, if and only if two, okay? And what does two say? Two say, two, sorry, two says that I have R, which is an equivalence relation, okay? Um, which is right in there, okay? Um, and it says that I take R, um, which is an equivalence relation and it's right invariant. And so if it's an equivalence relation, what it means is that it takes sigma star and then it partitions sigma star using equivalence relations, using equivalence classes, okay? And so these partitions might look like this, so these are the partitions that um, R creates with its uh, equivalence relation, right? So these are the equivalence classes that partition sigma star, okay? And R is also finite, right? It has a finite index, meaning that there's a finite number of equivalence classes here that make up sigma star, okay? And then two says that this language L here, right? The same language L here, is a union of some of these equivalence classes. So maybe L is this equivalence class, union this equivalence class. Okay, so this, so let's say one and two, these two sets make up L. Okay, so that's what it's saying. And then it says that if and only if three, and then three just says that this equivalence relation that we defined um, previously has a finite number of equivalence classes, right? So if you think of its equivalence classes like this, then it has a finite number of these. So it has a finite number of equivalence classes, okay? That's what this theorem is saying. All right, so how do we actually prove this? Well, because the statement says that one, if and only if two, if and only if three, we're just going to prove this um, using kind of a, a cyclic argument. So we're going to say, we're going to start with one implies, whoops, we're going to start with one implies two, then two implies three, and then three implies one. Okay, so that's how we're going to prove that. Okay.